past it. Right? The word fear, brothers and sisters, is not always in the negative sense. A child was told several times by his mom or by his father, the parents, and said, don't go near the hot iron because it's hot. But while the parents or parents look back or look away as at that time, the child just went and touched the surface of the hot iron. And what did they find out? His tongue him. And then, next time, he will not come near it. Why? Because he has learned from it. And if it is not the anticipation of danger that always makes us to fear, it could be the fear of evil itself that haunts people. So fear can also be in the positive sense. Positive with reference to reverence. Reverence describes a deep respect and honor for someone that is well placed in a society. Someone like your pastor, I know few people only respect their pastor, but some don't. A majority don't. Or someone like the queen, you know, she is given respect all over the world. What about in the court of law? How many people have been in the court before? You can go there to visit, I mean, to watch what is going on. In the court of Law is where you see the word reverence in display. People in the court, they revere the judge. Of course, if they don't, the judge will charge them for what? Contempt. That is, you willingly or willfully disobey the judge or you disrespect the law. So this is positive fear. What did I say? Positive fear with regards to your relationship with the people that are higher than you, let alone with God. So we talk about positive fear, or we talk about fear in relation to our reverence to God. Do you know that if you enter a place, you can know if the fear of the Lord is there? Abraham told us so in Genesis chapter 20, verse 11. He told us about he thinking that Abimelech had no fear of the Lord. And so Abraham told his wife, Sarah, he said, don't tell him that you are my wife. Tell him you are my sister. So Abraham told us that he knew that the reason why he did that was because he thought there was no fear of the Lord with Abimelech. What about in a church? You can know this fear of the Lord is there. What about in your home? When I came to visit you, or when you come to visit me, you can know if the fear of the Lord is in my home. Number two, not only is the fear of the Lord you, not only can you know that the fear of the Lord is in a place. If the fear of the Lord is in a place or in someone, most often, even God will supernaturally and miraculously make provision at that place for that person. Abraham did what God told him to do. He was just about to slaughter his son Isaac in Genesis 22. So early in the morning when God told him, go and sacrifice Isaac. He woke up early in the morning from verse 1 to 14. So at the moment he was about, he traveled a while and then he was left with the son. And he put his own son, only begotten son, 
on the altar as he brought his knife. He was about slaughtering the son. Ah! Then God called from heaven. I said, stop! Abraham, for now I know that you fear me. So, God can test us if you fear him or not. So the same way we know if there's a fear of God, of the Lord in the place, God himself can test us if we fear him or not. And in verse 14, when he passed the test, God miraculously provided a sheep or a lamb for him instead of his son. So that tells me now that when God tests each of us to know whether we fear him or not, that is, do we really respect him or not? When we pass that test of God, he often complements it and reward us miraculously. And so Abraham called that place where God rewarded him. Jehovah Jireh, which means in Hebrew, the Lord will see or the Lord will provide. The Lord often sees to our provision when we fear Him. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 10, learn to fear the Lord and live. In Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 23, Learn to fear the Lord always. In Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 19, learn to fear the Lord and keep his word to do them. In Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 12, learn to fear the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 13, learn to fear the Lord. So number three, therefore, not only can we know that the fear of God is in place and not only does God, in addition, when he knows we have his fear, miraculously and supernaturally provide for us when we pass his test. God also, where there is the fear of of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is visible. What makes the fear of God or the fear of the Lord to be seen is what we are going to learn very soon. But from what we have read so far in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 10, it says learn to fear the Lord and live. And in Deuteronomy chapter 14 23 as well, it says learn to fear the Lord always. And I also said in Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 19, learn to fear the Lord and keep his word and do them. I also told you that in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 12, it said, learn to fear the Lord. And the next verse, learn to fear the Lord. That means that we can learn to fear the Lord. It's a learning process. Learn to fear the Lord. The test is in Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. I'll read from verse 12 to 13. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. Now, look at verse 15 to 17. But Jehoshurum, Jehoshurum waxed fat and kicked. Jehoshurum waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxing fat, thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook the Lord, which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. 
They provoked in God to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations. Provoked they him to hunger. 17. They sacrificed unto devils or demons not to God. To gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Father, in the name of Jesus, use the, this clay lips of mine to minister life to your children. He said, if anyone should minister, let him minister according to the power of God given to him. And if anyone should speak, let him speak as an oracle of God. Let this clay lips of mine speak the oracle of God, even right now, in the name of Jesus. The fear of the Lord, brothers and sisters, is the beginning of knowledge. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs chapter 1 verse Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. Knowledge and wisdom, therefore, have one thing in common, which is the fear of the Lord. Did you get that? You cannot fear God if you don't respond to knowledge and wisdom. And that is the problem of most of us. When you stop attending to knowledge and to wisdom you will stop fearing God. In Proverbs chapter 15, verse 33, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. Before honor is humility. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. Before honor is humility. What did you get there? Instruction is one way direction. One way direction. Wisdom is that one way direction. He said the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. So you can see therefore that wisdom gives instruction. Wisdom and knowledge, I said they have one thing in common, which is the fear of the Lord. Wisdom and knowledge, they are not the same. While knowledge gives information, wisdom shows you the direction you must go if you have the fear of the Lord. Some people say wisdom is the application of knowledge. So you see that you have one, when you use one, you have the other. And so that is why he says, you're talking about the fear of the Lord, you're looking at the people that fear God, then check their knowledge and wisdom level. In that Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 15, he says, when ye showroom, that is another name to describe someone in Hebrew that is straight, upright, and just. When ye showroom works fat, ye showroom also is a symbol for the nation of Israel. So when Israel works fat, Fat, he kicked. To wax is to increase in size, in number, in prosperity, in prestige. Is an old English that came before um, 12th century, and we are now in the 21st century. So that word wax as old as it is, is over 900 years old. She said, when Yoshurom waxed 
fact. In other words, when you show them, when Israel increased in size, in prosperity, in prestige, he kicked. That word kick as well is also a word to represent rebel, to resist, to complain. When Israel was in Egypt for how many years? 430 years. They were under slavery. They were under wicked rulers. They cried unto God. And God helped them through the hands of the prophet that he used, Moses, to bring them out of bondage. And this Israel went on a journey to wilderness. The journey that was to take them about 11 days to 21 days, that journey took them 40 years. Yet, God never left them. God even provided moving rock to provide water for them. God never left them thirsty. He even pre- prepared for them fried chicken from heaven. This God is a good God. Tell somebody, say, God is a good God. He, he cares for you. You may not feel it, but God cares for you. So that's why I want you to look nothing at anything but unto God. Just put your focus on God. Every other thing will call, will, will pass away. But this God will last forever. So when they now got into the promised land, Israel waxed fat. And they kicked at God. Uh, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? When some of us first came to the United Kingdom, uh, you needed help. No papers, no people, no job. But that church, I am a member. Why? Because that is where you receive help. But uh, when the same person works fat, they began to kick at God. Yehoshurum, he forsook God, which made him unlikely esteem the rock of his salvation. You see, the pastor can only review and see changes of people, their lives, and compare. Now, such people have papers, immigration. You have a job. You have a nice car. You are now settled. Some are even married and they have children. But they forsook God that made them to arrive. Now they have arrived they don't attend church as before. They don't pray that much anymore. Why should I pray? I'm settled now. They now have a new God. Small G-O-D. A new God. The one that they pay obeisance to all the time. The one that they always sacrifice their time, sacrifice their life, sacrifice their money. When you ask them, what are you doing? I'm busy. Even their children, even children can become new God to some people. Just because before the children came, uh, you are this church, this God. Prayer, this God. The word of God, this God. But just look, have you not become Yeshua that has forsaken God? Forsaking God. Look at verse 16 and to 17. They provoke God to jealousy. We strain God. How do you provoke God? We size God 
with our newfound God. Our newfound job. Our newfound friend. Our newfound car or new purchased car. Can't you see? Our new found or new bought house. I've just got my paper. You can't tell me what to do anymore. They provoke God to jealousy with strange gods. They sacrifice to demons, but not to God. How did they sacrifice? Because throughout the week, they were play, they are paying obeisance to that new found God. That new found God has now become equal with their living God. They provoke God to jealousy. They are now sacrificing to demons, to gods whom they knew not. God is offended when people stop fearing him. That could be the reason why things are not smooth for some of us. God became offended and withdrew his support from Israel. May God have mercy on us. Amen. And uh, we need to pray that God do not remove your support from me. He did remove his support from Moses, the captain of Israel, the deliverer of Israel, the one that led Israel out of Egypt. Do you know that it was during the leadership of Moses that Korah or Korah et al. et al. and others were destroyed. The ground swallowed them up. Why? Because they did not fear the Lord. You find that in Numbers chapter 16, verse 30 to 32. As if this was not enough lesson for everyone to learn from, especially the leader, Moses. God now commanded Mr. Moses. He instructed him to speak to the moving rock so that the rock will release a stored up water because God cares for the Israelites. He cares for the Oshurim. But rather than doing what God says he should do, Moses was carried away with the same problem that many leaders get carried away today with, especially leaders, pastors of churches, bishops. You get carried away by the frustrations, by the withdrawal symptoms, by the lackadaisical attitude, by the lack of fear of the congregations. So Moses got carried away by such insubordination to the same God that brought them out of Egypt. And now these people are complaining. They kicked against this God. So, out of that being carried away, Moses did not remember what God said he should do. So when God said, speak to the rock, out of that annoyance, he got carried away. Hmm. He just hit the rock. And that rock actually was Christ Jesus. As we find in Numbers chapter 20, verse 12. When you don't fear the Lord, brothers and sisters, as in the case of Moses, it is unbelief. What do I say? Unbelief. unbelief. The same people that don't fear God, not only are they demonstrating unbelief, which you have to ask yourself. Not fearing the Lord is also rebellion. What did I say? Rebellion. Remember, they kicked at God's sacrifice. So God called it rebellion in Numbers 27, verse 14. He says, when you don't fear God, when you don't fear the Lord, not only is it unbelief, it is also rebellion. It is also trespassing. That is failure to honor God. He says, when you and I stop fearing God, we are actually trespassing. 
as we find in Deuteronomy 32, verse 51. So how can you and I, therefore, learn to fear the Lord? Because until we learn to fear the Lord, we cannot please God. And when we are not pleasing God, God will not be pleased to respect us. You know, when you give honor to God, God says he will honor you. How can we fear the Lord? Number one, by hearing the word of God. What do I say? By hearing the word of God. You are hearing my word, the word of God I'm telling you now. Fear. Faith comes into you. And that faith will instill fear in you. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, remember verse 10, God told uh, Moses, read the law to the hearing of the children so that they will hear and they will learn to fear. In Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 23, he says the same thing. They will hear and then they will learn to fear the law. In Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 19, they will hear and they will learn to fear the law. In Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 12, they will hear and they will learn to fear the law. In Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse uh, 13, they will hear and they will learn to fear the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, therefore, as you are hearing and watching, the number one way by which you can f- learn to fear the Lord is to hear the word of God. Amen. And the benefit of hearing the word of God outweighs the challenges. The benefit of hearing, you see, hearing outweighs challenges. So, but when you stop hearing, there's a problem. It says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Hearing the word gives you faith. And trust in God, which will make you learn to fear the Lord. When you stop hearing, you stop fearing the Lord. And Hebrew chapter 3, verse 15. Hebrew chapter 3, verse 15. He said, Why it is said today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Verse 17, but with whom was he grieved these 40 years? That tells us that in that wilderness, this Korah at all, God was grieved with them. In other words, they caused pain. They brought pain to God. Not fearing God makes God to experience pain from us. Not fearing the Lord is painful to God. And that was what made Moses to react in the flesh and forfeit the promise of the promised land. Not fearing the Lord is painful. So that generation died in the wilderness. So we know that the fear of God can be learned. And we said, how can we learn to fear? Our title today is Learn to Fear the Lord. How can we learn to fear the Lord? We say number one, by hearing the word of God. Number two, by looking into the word of God. Of the Lord. What did I say? Looking into the word of the Lord. What you don't look at, what you don't keep looking at, you never resemble it. You never become. 
what you continue to look at, you become. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all with an open face, beholding us in a glass. Everybody say glass. Yes. That's a mirror. We all with an open face. Beholding means we are looking into the mirror. The glory of the Lord are changed into the same image. We all with an open face as in a glass, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are being changed into the same image. The word of the Lord is the glory of the Lord. When we keep looking at the word of the Lord, you receive the glory of the Lord. When you keep looking at the word of God, the glory of the Lord shines on you. You see, wisdom makes the face of a man to shine. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 1. So, when you keep looking at the word of God, the glory of God reflects on you. Let me ask you, when you look into the mirror, is there anyone here that doesn't like the mirror or that doesn't look into the mirror every day? Raise up your hand. Even the men these days, they look into the mirror. In fact, some men spend more time looking at the mirror than women. You see? I don't know what they are looking at there. They are not putting on lipstick, but they spend more hours looking or more time looking at the mirror. So, every one of us look at the mirror, don't we? Now, when you look at the mirror, what do you see? You see yourself. Same image, don't you? Same image of yourself. So is the same as you look into the Bible. If you keep looking into the Bible, you discover yourself in relation to God. Suddenly you see how you are related with God. How far you have moved from Him. How weak your prayer life has become. How empty your knowledge of the Bible. How sluggish you are. How backward you are in soul winning. And you can't argue with what you see. Can the mirror lie? The mirror, can the mirror smile back at you? <laughs> when you smile at the mirror, it smiles back at you, isn't it? <laughs> so that means that you see yourself in the same image as you are. So when you and I, therefore, are learning to fear the Lord, I said the number two way you can learn to fear God is to continue to look into the word of God so that you can see yourself as you are. You see, it's only a foolish man or woman that will see that something is wrong in his marriage or marriage and will pretend. It's only a foolish man or woman that will see that he is moving away from God and will say all is well. Mirror don't lie. The same way you are is what God will show you. If you can dare look into the word of God. Every time we sin against God, our eyes become open. Like uh, the first Adam. You know, did you read that their eyes were open? In Genesis chapter 3. Said the moment they ate the forbidden fruit, what happened? Their eyes became open open. Were they blind before? No. You know what it means is that their eyes now open so that they now see what God did not want them to see before. They now begin to see and love to do sinful things that God has kept their eyes from seeing before. Same applies to us today. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, it says, And the eyes of them both were open. Now they see what God did not want them to do, and they love doing it. You see, that's what happened when we sin. You see, when we stop fearing the Lord, our mind becomes emboldened 
to love to do sin. So the moment you and I refuse, therefore, to fear God, we move away from him. And that was exactly what happened to the first Adam. When they heard that God's voice was coming, what did they do? They went to hide. Have you wondered why, when it is time for Bible study, you are not there? Sin. Sin will make you to hide from God's presence. What made Jonah to went down into Tashish when he was supposed to go to Nineveh? Sin. So when you and I sin, even though we know that it's the time of Bible study on Wednesday, and time for prayer meeting on Friday, you know, sin will make us not to come. It makes us to hide from the presence of God. Sin was what made first Adam and his wife to hide. In fact, some people are now coming with that trick now. They know that it's a Bible study day, and so they will stay late at work so that they can come back late at home. Then you begin to look at it as if God did not know. Some people, when they know they are supposed to be in church, you see, then they will give excuse. It is sin that will make people to excuse himself from the Lord. So you have become like the first Adam. Because the devil knows that if he can keep you not to come, not to fear God, he knows that he can stop you from being blessed. Will you allow him? Now that you know. Amen. When they heard the voice of God, in verse 8, they went into hiding. Sin will make you to hide because you've lost the fear of the Lord. You see, I am talking to all of us so you have to pick your own. And there are some other people that is going to watch us on YouTube and then they will pick their own as well. So I will employ you to not to hide and take the word of God as it is. Ask yourself, do I fear the Lord? Is what pastors say, is it what I'm experiencing? Because we are in God's presence. And God can see the heart of everyone. But I'm telling you, if you really fear the Lord, or you make up your mind to fear the Lord from today, things will get better for your life. It will get better in your life. So, I said, number one, what I do learn to fear the Lord? By hearing the word of God. Number two, by looking into the word of God. But how often should we look into the word of God? Continuously, consistently, constantly. You are sleeping. Continuously, consistently, constantly. You stand up. You just walk around. How often should we look at the word of God? Continuously, Consistently, constantly. Continuously, because in James chapter 1, verse 25, he said, But who so look into this perfect law of liberty? Do you want liberty from Satan? Then look into the word of God. The word of God is the key to your freedom. He calls the word of God the perfect law of liberty. You can know. Who is oppressed of the devil from who is not? Because the one that is free from oppression is the one that keeps looking into the perfect law of liberty. Who so look into the perfect law of liberty and do what? Continuous daring. So continuously is how often we should be looking into the word of God. Don't look into the word of God when you feel like. Make it your effort to continuously look into it because something will jump out of that word of God to you. Glory. Hallelujah. Faith comes by hearing. Isn't it? 
That's continuously. That's a continuous tense. Faith comes by hearing. He didn't say faith comes by what you have heard. Is that what he said? Faith does not come by what you have heard, but faith comes by what you are hearing. Now, now, now. Faith comes now by what you are hearing. Now faith is. Hebrews 11. One. So faith is now. So the reason why many of us are paralyzed from fearing God is because we thought faith will come from what we have heard in the past. No. You, faith is paralyzed in the past. Faith is only effective now. Faith is always now. So as I'm talking to you, you are hearing the word of God. You are hearing the word of God. If faith is going to come, it's going to be when? Now. If you are going to get direction at all, it's going to be now. If you are going to know what to do to get out of problem, it's going to be now. Hearing, therefore, must, be, must not be once or twice, but how, how often? Continuously. That's how faith will come. So you can now see whether you have faith or not. You can now see whether you have learned to fear God or not. Because when you don't have faith in God, then you lack fear of God. So, your looking into the word of God must be continuous for faith to come and for the fear of the Lord to arise within you. Not only must you often look into the word of God continuously, you must also look into the word of God consistently. In Acts of Apostles chapter 17, verse 11, he compared the people of Berean better, more honorable than the Thessalonians. Why? Because they search the scriptures. How often? Daily. That is steadily. On a daily basis. And that tells you there's a rate there. There's a daily rate. And that tells you consistency. So, how often should you look into the word of God? Consistently. Consistently. Freedom from I'm not feeling like it today. Oh, I am tired today. And so some of us, for one week, we did not open the Bible. And some of us, we only open it and close it. When you are supposed to delve into it, what is going to save you? You have to get direction from it. He said, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. Before, humil- before honor is before uh, honor is humility. Before honor is humility. Proverbs 15, 33. So, you know something is going to promote you, and yet, devil, new God, new found God, will keep you from it. But you're supposed to be wiser than the devil. You're supposed to be wiser than the devil. Because wisdom itself, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, it tells us that Christ has become our wisdom. And because you are in Christ, you are wiser than the devil. So why would the foolish devil stop you from accessing what will promote you? Can you see that many a times we are not operating in wisdom? We are not operating in knowledge. And that is why fear of God has been eroded. But it's coming back today. Amen. I said it's coming back today. Amen. Some will not be consistent. They say, oh, I'm tired. I just came back from work. I see, I'm just tired. <laughs> we are tired last week. We are tired this week. In one month, tired. Say, let not that man think he shall receive anything from God. A double-minded man or woman is unstable in all his ways. And that's why when you are tired, 
you find that not only will you be tired not to study the Bible, you'll be tired not to pray, you'll be tired not to visit, you will be tired not to evangelize, you'll be tired on a Sunday, you'll be tired on a Wednesday, you'll be tired on a Friday of the church services, and then you'll be tired for seminar program on the church. You see what the devil is doing? Gradually killing you like that rat that comes from a can that will begin to eat people's toes and be blowing coal here. See? Gradually. And then you wake up in the morning, you see blood in your toes. So what has happened? You've been visited. The enemy has captured you. But that enemy will vomit you in Jesus' name. Amen. So it might not be you that is in the church now. It might be other people that are watching and hearing. But for you that are in the church, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. The reason why many are not fearing the Lord is because they are not hearing the word of God. They are not looking into the word of God. Continuously, consistently, and how often should we also look into the word of God? Not only continuously and consistently, but also constantly. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, in that verse 23 of James 1, if any be a hearer and not a doer, amen? You know the meaning between, the, the, the difference between a hearer and a doer? If any, not be, if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer. So some people have already made up their their minds. I'm only hearing. The moment they step out of the church, they forgot. That cannot profit you. Remember, you are born again. This is the word of God that will prosper you. He said, you must search it as for hid treasure. Then you will know the fear of the Lord and knowledge of God. This word will promote you if you will fear the Lord. The one who comes to church on a Sunday, only on Sundays, only to hear the word of God, the message of the pastor, leave this church and does not do what he has heard. Is that a doer? No. He's just a hearer. That is not constant with God. That person is not constant with God. That person is not constant with God. Say, so if you seek him, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hid treasures, then shall you understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 4 to 5. So that means the treasures you want in life, the treasures that is making you to still come to God as of today is hidden from you. You know why it's hidden from you? So that you can find it. The value of a commodity is in its scarcity. The value of a commodity is in its what? Scarcity. The treasures you come to church for are hidden from you. And you will only find them when you constantly look into the word of God. How often? Constantly look into the word of God. And this is why Satan will stop many of us from Bible studies during the week so that you don't enter the prepared blessing that God has prepared for you. Remember we said it in the morning in April chapter 4. He said, labor to enter into the rest. Lest some will fall, lest some fall as others because of their unbelief. So, not fearing the Lord 
is unbelief. Not fearing the Lord is trespassing. Not fearing the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I think we should stop now. Hallelujah. I think we should we'll continue at another time. But we, I can summarize that uh, the fear of the Lord can be learned. The fear of the Lord can be taught. How do you fear the Lord? By hearing the word of God. See, by looking into the word of God. That's where we have stopped today. And how often do you look continuously, consistently, and constantly? Let us pray.